you're going to receive the goddess's revelation at the holy tomb? That's news to me. I did not see that coming. Lady Rhea's going too, right? I hear it will be well guarded, but is that really okay? If Solon's allies are still around, it's certainly true that we don't know when or where they may appear. I don't know what type of place this holy tomb is, but we should be cautious. If something happens, we'll have to take matters into our own hands. What do you think, Professor? Is it really okay for Lady Rhea to attend? Leave it to our fearless leader to shrewdly factor in Rhea's fighting ability. You're bold, Teach. I love it. Well, the truth is, we won't know what's going to happen until it happens. All we can do is stay on our guard and play it by ear. That's quite enough babbling, Claude. There is nobody more unfit for a holy ceremony than you. Um, divine punishment won't strike us for setting foot in the holy tomb, right? Good grief. Why are you always so negative? Hmm? Flame? Is something on your mind? Who, me? No, it is nothing. May we all see this through to the end. It still doesn't make sense to me. A goddess was living inside Teach, right? But now there's a ceremony to receive a revelation or whatever. How could that be necessary anymore? There must be another objective. <sighs> it's pointless to speculate about it now. We'll know the answer soon enough. There isn't any danger for us students, but be careful, Teach. Are you surprised, Professor? This is the Holy Tomb. That mechanism for descending underground back there, what powers it? When I tried to come by myself, it wouldn't even budge. This is where the goddess who created this world was laid to rest, along with her children. It is said that our creator, the goddess Sothis, sat upon this very throne. Professor, do you recognize this throne? So long. I have waited so very long for this day. Sit upon the throne. I have no doubt you will be gifted a revelation from the goddess. Well? It was supposed to be but a step away. What could possibly be missing? Sorry to disturb you when you're distressed, Archbishop, but it seems some uninvited guests have arrived. <laughs> Don't move, any of you. If you move, your lives will be forfeit. Thank you ever so much for guiding us this far. The Imperial Army will now take possession of everything in the Holy Tomb. <laughs> the Imperial Army? What are they doing here? So, they knew we were heading to the Holy Tomb and followed us here. Hey, who is that standing next to the angry guy? Could that be... The Flame Emperor. I see. So you've been allied with the Empire from the beginning. What are they doing here? What do they hope to gain? There's only one goal for grave robbers like these. Right, Flame Emperor? You're here to steal the treasure that rests within the Holy Tomb. For a fool, you catch on quickly. Those crest stones will be ours. That infernal power, which is masquerading as a medicine, but is truly a poison, will plague this world no longer. Insolence! You will atone for the sin of trampling on this holy resting place. Professor, destroy these villainous traitors who dare dishonor our creator!
I will not allow such violence from the Empire. Strike down the rebels and protect the Holy Tomb. The crest stones are in the caskets. Open every last one of them. The Holy Tomb must not be desecrated. Protect as many of the crest stones as you can. I'll crush them all. I stand ready. I will get the victory. My turn? You're in my sight! I read you like a book. Let's take them out. Who, me? To work. Ready and able. Stay focused. Take away the crest stones. All of them. That is enough. Do you even know what those stones are? done. Learn a thing or two. Enough of this nonsense. Yeah! Naturally. Another one down. Oh! 
A trivial victory. Battle, a chance to grow. Don't you know who I am? Ah! Now you know. <laughs> I'm told it's fine to kill those who resist. Now then, how shall I cook you? Your life is forfeit. An offensive sight. So, the end has come. Is this some sick joke? The Flame Emperor is actually Edelgard? You have disappointed me, Edelgard. To think that a descendant of House Heresbelg would dare betray the Holy Church. Professor, kill Edelgard at once. She is a danger to all of Fodlin. Such a rebellious heart cannot be allowed to keep beating. I have achieved my objective. I will retreat. Farewell, Professor. If we meet again, it will be on the battlefield. Come, Hubert. To flee is futile, wicked girl. The Church of Seros will raise its entire army against you until you have been captured and punished. You have defiled the holy tomb, dishonored the goddess, and humiliated your brethren. That crime will never be erased. Even if you burn in the eternal flames and spill all of your blood into the goddess's soil. Come, Professor. Let us return and decide upon our next course of action. I'm not exactly on friendly terms with the princess, but I do have a few questions for her. Edelgard said that the crest stones represent power. That means she knows how to use them. She almost certainly knows other secrets of Fodlin as well. Once things calm down a bit, there's a lot more that Rhea needs to tell us. I just hope there's still time. I have this strange feeling that history is being written. That an age of anarchy is upon us. Let's hope I'm mistaken.
The leaders of the church have misused its creed to fulfill their true desire, to rule the world. They have fooled the people of Fodlan. Long ago, they divided the empire to create a kingdom, and then divided that kingdom to create an alliance. They did all of this to make the masses bicker amongst themselves. They caused instability in order to reinforce their own authority. They gathered gold and lived in extravagance. How? By preying on the devotion of those who wished for the goddess's salvation. Those corrupt hypocrites cannot lead Fodlin to true peace. Their foul belief system must be torn asunder so that true wisdom may finally prevail. And so, I have decided. By order of the Adrestian Emperor, Edelgard von Hressfeld, the Empire hereby declares war on the Church of Seros. I cannot believe it. Let us recount the situation as it stands, Professor. After you returned from the Holy Tomb, the Adrestian Empire declared war upon the Church of Seros, as well as our allies. Edelgard demanded her own father relinquish the throne and then assumed the position of Emperor. She has deemed the Church of Seros to be an evil of this world, and is calling upon the people of Fodlin to help her tear it down. I must discuss our response to this declaration with the Archbishop, after the Knights return from their investigation. Until then, watch over the students. See that they remain calm. I heard what happened, Teach. The Princess, well, the Emperor now, she really did it, didn't she? The lords and dukes of both the kingdom and the alliance have been called out, and now have to choose between the church and the empire. The seed of conflict was always there, and now we find ourselves in the middle of a war that will tear Fodlin in two. The empire is rash, and I never thought it would come to this. How could something like this happen? I hope everyone back home is safe. I'm sure it's mass confusion at home right now, my brother must be worried sick about me. You're absolutely right, Teach. I'm sure a lot of us are worried about our homes, but all we can do for now is prepare for battle and tread carefully. Part 1. White Clouds. Lone Moon. To War. Together, the people of Fodlin relish the beauty of the brilliant moon overhead as another year ends. They recall sad partings and new acquaintances alike, but each person must still walk their chosen path alone. With each day, the presence of spring grows stronger, and yet a lone moon still haunts the sky, a silent reminder, perhaps, of some inescapable truth. Unforgivable! I cannot fathom that the Adrestian Empire would embark on such a violent course of action. The fault is my own. I failed to see the wickedness within Edelgard's heart. There is no question on that front. She clearly wishes to conquer all of Fodlin. And in order to achieve her own selfish ambitions, she plotted with ill-meaning strangers and defiled the Holy Tomb. Or perhaps her ambitions are even grander than we know. Perhaps she is planning to make herself a false deity by demonizing the Church of Seros. Adrestia received its very name through a divine oracle. 
To injure the goddess is a sin most foul that shall not be forgiven, nor forgotten. We must stop the Empire, and quickly. I have returned, Rhea. Welcome back, Shamir. Were you able to discern the Empire's movements? Their main troops are marching towards Garrick Mach. It is said that they will join forces with Edelgard's army and arrive within two weeks. Two weeks? That is not enough time. It will require all of our efforts just to prepare our defenses before then. We must send notice to all surrounding villages at once. We must order the residents of Garrick Mach to flee for their lives. It will be done. Professor, listen closely. If our enemy invades the monastery, I will have no choice but to stand upon the battlefield. If something happens to me, I am entrusting my sacred duties to you. You must have guessed it by now. The truth of who you are. Or perhaps I should say, your lost memories are surely beginning to return. I have acted all these long years as a mere proxy for you. But the duty is yours, and yours alone. Only you can lead the people of Fodlan. Rhea, please. You must tell me all that you know, I beg of you. <sighs> that one is the progenitor god. Am I correct? In a sense. Our dear professor is a vessel, one who carries the power of the progenitor god within. In time, the vessel will become one with the power contained within, and the progenitor god shall return to this world. I see. I trust that you are aware of the questionable nature of this experiment. But I suppose there is no turning back. I ask that you help our friend, and in doing so, help her. I am waiting and hoping for the moment when our Creator rules this wayward land once more. I understand. As ever, I will take you at your word. Lady Rhea! Brother, I will do my part as well. Flame, were you eavesdropping? <sighs> Regardless, I am glad to hear it. You owe your life to the Professor, after all. And in the end, they may prove to be our brethren. You have my gratitude, Sedith. And you as well, Flane. As followers of the Progenitor God, it is up to us to see our mission through. I could go back to last month and throttle my carefree self. Now it turns out Edelgard is the Flame Emperor and the new Adrestian Emperor. And she's striking out against the monastery, with the full force of the Imperial Army behind her. We gotta beat her at her own game, for our sake as well as Lady Rhea's. What? That girl's starting an all-out war, isn't she? But an enemy is an enemy, no matter who they are. Don't let compassion for her get in your way. Uh, I don't normally have a problem jumping into a fight, but it feels strange going up against my father. We aren't especially close, but he's not an opponent I'd want to face. I'd almost rather fight a monster. I hope he's not part of the group coming to attack Garrett Mach. I'll be really busy with assignments and getting ready for graduation. But now, now that things have turned out like this, I guess there's nothing to do but fight. Huh? Oh, 
Professor? What actually happened last month? I can't keep up at all. Edelgard is the Emperor? And she's declared war against the Church? So now we're at war? What is going on? I really don't understand any of this. What should I do? Dear me. Edelgard became Emperor and raised an army, huh? Who knew the kid had it in her? I mean, yeah, of course, I knew she'd be Emperor eventually, but... The more I think about it, the more surprised I am. I wonder who's gonna win. But would it really be okay for Edelgard to win? Maybe. Things must be pretty crazy in Fargus about now. My father must be beside himself. I don't get it. Why did Edelgard make enemies with the nobles? Me either. Of course. Even if we did get it, what do we do about it? Is that so? Once the Imperial Army reaches the monastery, we'll have no choice but to fight. What's going to happen to us? I believe you. With the Knights on our side, and especially with you, Professor, I know we can do this! Empire's aggression cannot stand, but if we are going to attack them now, we must be honest with ourselves about our chances of success. It goes without saying that I will fight the Imperial Army with everything I have for as long as I am able. But House Gloucester's territory is adjacent to Imperial lands. Let us proceed with caution. Yes. His Highness calls for the head of Edelgard. For me, that is cause enough to fight. The hatred of His Highness is also my hatred. Any other feelings I may have are irrelevant. And if Edelgard was responsible in any way for the tragedy of Dusker, that is something I cannot ignore. If that is the case, then she is my enemy. Professor, Professor I guess it's easy for me to say this now. I'm so glad I'm from the Alliance. I had no idea Edelgard was so scary. And Dimitri seems totally different than before. I wouldn't bend a knee to either of them. Well, I definitely don't hate him. <laughs> he rarely takes things seriously. But somehow, I just know we can always rely on him. Well, if we're forced to protect this place, our future is going to be dark no matter what. the arrival of a letter from Edelgard. She is asking that I join her side. She is making the decision. No, she is deciding if Bridget is a friend or an enemy of the Empire. But my choice is not to be friends. My choice is to fight with you. Bridget is not a friend of the Empire. We will not be following again. We will be ready to fight with you instead. Professor. What? To think that the Flame Emperor was Edelgard all along. Flame's abduction? Geralt's murder? The turmoil in Remire Village? Whether or not she was the mastermind behind what happened, it at least seems like she was involved. And yet she was able to remain so composed while she was enrolled at the Officer's Academy. What does war with Edelgard mean for us, Professor? And why does she even want that? Yeah, I guess we'd have to ask her. That's how it always goes, I guess. You never realize something can't be undone until you've done it. What? <gasps> Professor! Uh. 
kingdom. I hear the Alliance's territory will be in danger if we don't get rid of these Empire guys. If the Alliance is in danger, that means my sister's in danger too. There's no way I'm gonna allow that. It doesn't matter how many guys they throw at us. I'll beat them all. These muscles aren't just for show. But first, I gotta get some food. The most important nobles in the Empire are known for taking power from the previous Emperor. My father included. I didn't think it possible that the Imperial Princess could ascend the throne so easily. However, it seems that both my father and Kaspar's are supporting Edelgard. Having both the Minister of Domestic Affairs and Minister of Military Affairs on your side gives you total control over the Empire's military and finances. We must have been making preparations for quite some time without anyone noticing. Professor! Really? Pardon me. Greetings, Professor. Something to report. Unexpected, isn't it? Apparently, this is the first time Garrig Mach has been invaded in its whole 995-year history. It's my job to protect this gate, so even if enemies come in droves, I will never let them through. I hope we both survive. Let's battle with all our might and pray we win this thing. Well, I'll be. You know, Professor, I'm glad that I came to the Officer's Academy. I feel accepted here. I've learned so much. Honestly, I'm surprised at how much I've grown. So, I will not let the Academy be destroyed. It's important to me, and I will protect it. I feel braver just hearing you say that, Professor. We're gonna win this, Professor. Pardon me. Half of the Empire's six great noble families have declared their support for Edelgard. Of the other three, Lord Vestral was assassinated. Hubert, his son, will succeed him. Bernadetta's father, Count Varley, is under house arrest. His wife is now supporting Edelgard. And my father, he was stripped of his role as Prime Minister. As a result, House Eyre has lost all of its power, all of its lands. We have lost everything. I... I... What do I do? Please. What? There are always small power struggles, still. It has been hundreds of years since all of Fodlan was consumed by war. I didn't actually think it would come to this. I feel as though I'm not in my rightful place. I cannot protect the things I should. Professor, if I survive this war, I wish to return to my homeland, to the land of my king. We're falling behind. I don't know that we can keep up with the new Emperor. To think that she was able to raise an army of that size right under our noses. However hard we fight, I give us a 50% chance of winning. The enemy has too many advantages. We must make careful preparations. Heya! Edelgard even trying to achieve. She wants to destroy the church so badly that she'll take on anyone who doesn't fall in line? I don't get it. I just can't believe she'd start a war over it. Not to mention using such nasty tactics to get her way. Could Captain Gerald's death have also been a part of her plan? Don't you go and die on me, Professor. Captain Gerald would never forgive you. The Empire is moving quickly. Edelgard must have been preparing for this for a while now. If you really think about it, she must have been planning for this even before you got the Sword of the Creator. 
Of course she was always a step ahead of us. We were blinded by the ball and the battle of the eagle and lion and everything else. I refuse to go down like this, though. So let's do something about it. What do you say? It's you and me, Teach. We've got this. Those who serve the church must cast aside all selfish desires and devote themselves fully to their beliefs. But is it right to wield piety as a weapon? I have never considered such things before. The church, I... I, I have always done what I thought best to save the people of Fodlan. It's my job to protect Lady Rhea. I've got to do it, and i got to do it as best I can. And if that means i got to die for her, then I will. Uh, how could Edelgard treat Lady Rhea like she's the bad guy? She's never been anything but nice to everybody. I just don't get it at all. the goddess. Such a vile act cannot be forgiven. There is no need to worry, I promise you that. Divine punishment will surely fall upon them. <laughs> in the days of yore, the goddess would grow angry with such insolent fools and roast them in ALL. I'll have that girl's head. Just you wait. We have no choice but to fight, have we? Oh, but why would Edelgard do something like this? I'm sure we'll be all right, though, Professor. The goddess will keep us safe. Professor, can we really defeat someone who is willing to turn their back on the world just to uphold their own beliefs? I've spent my whole life running in fear, and now I... Surely we can win if we rely on each other. Right, Professor? Professor... War is breaking out again, is it not? There was a truly terrible war, once upon a time. I never wanted another war. All we can do is steal ourselves for the fight ahead. calls herself the Flame Emperor, was connected to those strange beings. The Imperial Army might be using even more terrifying methods than we know. You had better be cautious, Professor. Any amount of carelessness might prove to be our undoing. Mind behind the attacks on the monastery was Edelgard? Wow. Doesn't make much sense, though, does it? There would need to be all sorts of territories and groups tangled up in this sort of mess. <sighs> I'm gonna stop. I don't really have the head for this political stuff. Mostly, I'm worried about my old opera company. I wonder what's happening in the capital right now. I hope they're safe. The holy tomb held many crest stones. 
This is the first time I've heard of crest stones being hidden away in such a place. But more importantly, I'm interested to know the Empire's aim. Why would their army desire crest stones? There is power there, yes. And yet, I must think on this. The crest stones lie at the heart of the events surrounding Conan Tower and the chapel as well. And of course, the crest stones somehow transform those traitors and their captives into demonic beasts. Could that possibly be their aim? The Empire's army may well plan to use crest stones to create demonic beasts. To think Edelgard was somehow connected to the captain's murderer. Well, perhaps it's pointless to get upset about the past. My duty now is to prepare for battle. We're depending on your strength, Professor. Crush our enemies. Captain, I hope you're watching. We will protect Garrick Mark. We must protect Garrick Mark. Defiling the Holy Tomb was a sacrilege. I will not allow such a thing to happen again. The Archbishop has already given you a new responsibility. I want you to rise to that honor. I have something to ask of you. How are you, Professor? Any new changes to report? With the Imperial Army drawing near, it is most vexing that we cannot relax and converse as we once did. Thankfully, you have the divine protection of the Goddess on your side. Please try to listen carefully for her voice. May the Goddess's voice reach you. Pardon me. Professor? Really? Hi. I cannot believe our negligence allowed the Empire to invade. Edelgard probably gathered her soldiers in Garrig Mach, intending to do this from the start. Soldiers disguised as merchants and pilgrims to avoid suspicion, infiltrating the entire area little by little. They couldn't be better prepared. We'll have a tough time winning this one, I'm afraid. Done. You have my thanks. Excuse me. How are you? 